We're down in the paddock with trainer Julie Miller. Thank you so much. I'm so glad that you're here tonight because I just love talking to women um, who are trainers. Really, no drivers yet, but trainers. So thanks for taking the time. Well, I'm glad you're having me. This will be fun. Yeah, a little girl power in here. Uh, so begin by, by sharing if you have a very successful uh, stable. Tell us where it's at and who you have in the barn. Um, right now we have 30 horses. We're at Gateway Farms, which is uh, in the middle of New Jersey, close by Freehold Raceway. And um, we have about eight employees, and um, we just enjoy racing here at the Poconos. We come over as much as we can. Nice. So 30 horses, is that a good number for you guys to handle? Yeah, actually 30 is a good number. Um, we like to keep it 30 or under. Um, Andy and I really enjoy having a really good pulse of the situation and what's going on, going with our horses every day. And um, we can really do that with 30. I know you guys race at different tracks, um, but you're, you had mentioned your husband, Andy. He does a lot of the drives. You just need to take me back to the beginning here and tell me how you guys first met because I understand you're both in the, the harness racing industry. Yeah, as a matter of fact, Andy and I um, met on a county fair racing circuit in Decatur, Illinois, and um, he was flirting with me in the post parade, <laughs> and that's how we first started speaking, and um, ended up parking me during the race. No. I know, but I still beat him fair and square, so um, that's where our uh, love began on the racetrack. I love it. it blossomed there. It's kind of like on the playground, you know, when the boy's picking on the little girl. I exactly, exactly. <laughs> I, uh, you know, I just thought he was really cute and it just uh, snowballed from there and here we are. It was magic ever since. So working with your husband, what is that relationship like? Because I love mine, but I just can't imagine sharing a, you know, place with him where we're working. So what is that like? Well, you know, honestly, I get this question a lot and um, it really boils down to on seriousness is respect. I mean, he... Um, values my opinion and I value his and the goal is to have the horse race the best it can so if I have opinions and he has opinions we just try to consolidate it and do the best we can with the horse um, so you're originally from Iowa what uh, brought you guys east well you know what um, the venue in Illinois got to be um, pretty dismal and we thought you know we're pretty young and our kids were young and we were just wanted to try it on the east coast and so far that move has worked out well for us so within the 30 horses, any standouts that you guys have? Um, actually, right now, we're pretty fortunate. We've got some two-year-old trotters that look pretty nice. Um, a PA Sires, Money on My Mind, and another PA Sires, Mick Boogie. Um, and those two really seem like uh, they could be the real deal. How do you know when they're young like that, when you have something special? Well, you know, that's the fun about training babies, and that's uh, actually Andy and myself's favorite part of the sport is to get a horse that's never, you know, jogged or raced and to develop them. And when they, I term it as when the light switch goes on and they realize what their job is and they want to run races, it's just a feeling you can't describe to anybody else. What do you love about the sport that's kept you in it? Because um, I understand your second generation, your parents were, were both involved as well? Yeah, my parents race and um, um, Andy's parents breed horses. So, you know, we did have a little bit of racing growing up. But I tell you what, it's it's with anybody a job. Um, we have a passion for racing and we love it and we eat, sleep and breathe the horses. So, And your kids love the horses as well. Any uh, future generations do you think that'll be racing they'll be wearing the orange colors well i you know like we say as long as they um get a good college education and we would support them in anything they do and my daughter really enjoys the training aspect and my son actually enjoys the uh, grandstand atmosphere of the um <laughs> picking the horses winning so he enjoys your guys's comments every evening when we're watching the poconos nice. oh that's good to hear we have a fan out there exactly. um i guess share any words of wisdom for young females who are either thinking about getting involved in training or driving um, or who may be just starting out anything that you would like to share with them or wish you knew earlier in your career you know the biggest thing I say is listen listen and um, you know pick out your role models and there's plenty of them out there and just you know really work hard and I'm telling you what if you have confidence and a, a will to work you can do anything and your routine, can I ask you about this? Because um, with so many horses, I can imagine good help is definitely key there. But what is your schedule like when you guys are racing at different tracks and also training in the morning? Well, and that's actually kind of how it is. You know, um, I'm in the mornings, always at Gateway, you know, seven days a week. And then Andy has to take off to go drive, you know, by 10 at Chester or or um, at the evening at the Meadowlands or Poconos. And so really, I rely on my assistants and Andy to race the horses, and I'm more of the prep, you know, trying to get them the best they can be so when they show up to race, you know, we have a good good chance of winning. Well, preparation is key, but I'm about to throw some questions your way that you will not be able to prepare for. It's for the <laughs> lightning round. Um, just a couple one-worders. What's your favorite food? I would have to say steak. 
steak. And what are you drinking along with that steak? What's your favorite drink? Oh, of course, the Cabernet. <laughs> That's a perfect compliment. <laughs> um, what about a dream vacation for you guys? Where would you like to go to or have been to that would like to get back? You know what? We've never been to Aruba, and I'm kind of hinting to Andy maybe this fall if we can work it in that maybe we can do that with the kids. Yeah. Do you have a favorite movie? Oh my goodness, probably Talladega Nights. Isn't that pathetic? Oh. But it's just funny. It's just funny <laughs> to me. I do love that movie. What about a favorite actor? If you could like be in a movie alongside somebody famous, who do you think that you'd be acting with? Oh boy, I'd probably have to say uh, Colin Farrell. Ooh. I think he's kind of uh, Irish and cute, so <laughs> <laughs> I would go with Colin Farrell. <laughs> I can't wait till we interview Andy. I really can't. Um, and let's see, what about your superhero power if you could have one what do you think that you would love to be able to do well, that is a great question because i am a diehard wonder woman fan and to have an invisible jet to have a magic lasso no sidekick i mean she did it all in her high heels so <laughs> i was pretty impressed with wonder woman you know i have interviewed a lot of people wonder woman maybe because they're all guys i've never heard of so i'm so excited for that answer um and last question what about role models uh, anybody that you look up to any mentors well you know what of course my parents i mean they really instill a lot of good values in me and i hope i instill in my kids but you know after being on the east coast getting great advice from like brenda teague or linda toscano jackie and gracia everyone's willing to help and um i think that makes the business even better Thank you so much, Julie. It was such a pleasure uh, meeting up with you and getting the chance to do the interview. I'm so excited to talk to you again throughout the season. Well, thank you, Kelly. I appreciate it. <laughs>